In section 5.3, we're going to look at a couple more ways of displaying distributions. So far, we've looked at histograms, which are nice, and we're going to look at a few more methods. The first one is called the stem plot, which displays a distribution of a variable by attaching the final digits of each observation as a leaf on a stem made up of all but the final digit. And also a dot plot, which is a chart where data is represented using dots over a number line. So first let's look at the steps to make a stem plot and then we'll go through an example of that. And then we'll look at the steps to make a dot plot and go through an example of that. So to make a stem plot, first I want to separate each observation into a stem consisting of all but the rightmost digit and a leaf which is the final digit. The next step is to write the stems in a vertical column with the smallest at the top and draw a vertical line at the right of this column. And I want to include all the stems even if they aren't used. Lastly, I'm going to write each leaf in the row to the right of its stem in increasing order out from the stem. So let's go through an example of that. This example, we're looking at the area of states and here I've given the area in thousands of square miles. So the first step in making my stem plot is to separate each observation into a stem and a leaf. So I want to break off the final digit of each observation from the rest of the digits. And I'm just going to draw a line in each column to do that. And you'll notice that for the states here where I just had a single digit area, I've put some zeros to the left for their stems. Alright, my next step is to write the stems in a vertical column from the smallest to the largest. So I've got them listed in decreasing order in this chart, so my smallest stem is a 0 and my largest stem is a 66. Now I'm going to break this rule slightly because there's such a big gap here between 26 and 66. I'm not actually going to write out all of the stems, that even the ones that aren't used. I'm going to put an arrow here to show that there's a big gap in between 26 and 66. So I've written all of the other stems from 0 up to 26 and then 66 out on its own here. And the next step is to write each leaf to the right of its stem in increasing order. So we're in increasing order, so I'm just going to step through the chart starting at the bottom right here. So for Rhode Island, I'm going to have a 2 and Delaware is also going to have a 2. So I'll fill those in to the right of my 0 here. Then I've got a 6 and a couple of 9s and that fills in all the states that have a 0 as their stem. Next I've got a 10 for Vermont, so I'm going to put a 0 here. A couple of 11s gives me two 1s and a 12 gives me a 2 to the right of the stem that's 1. West Virginia has 24,000 square miles, so I'll get a 4 for its leaf. And then South Carolina has 32, so I'll get a 2, a 5, and a 6 for the leaves off of 3. For 4, I get a 0, a 2, a 3, a 5, a 6, and an 8. So there's a group of states that have 40 something thousand square miles of area. Then for 5 I get a 2, another 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, 
I'm running out of room here. An eight and a nine. For six, I've only got a couple. I've got a five and a six. For seven, I've got a zero and then another zero. A couple of ones. A couple of sevens. Then I move on to eight. I've got a two, a four, a five, and a seven. For nine, I've got a seven, and a couple of eights. For 10, I've just got one state, so I've got a four here. For 11, I've got one and a four. For 12, I've just got one state, that's a two. No 13s, now I skip to 14, where I've got a seven. And then I skip to 16, where I've got a four. And I skip to 26, where I've got a 9, and finally 66, where I've got a 3. So looking at this stem plot, I can see that most states are clustered down here between 0 and 12, and then I've got a few kind of trailing off with 14 and 16. And then a couple of outliers, which would be Texas and Alaska, are the biggest states out here. So here, this is redrawn a little bit better, typed with the computer, so you can see it better. And you might notice that if you turn the stem plot on its side, it looks a lot like a histogram. Next, let's look at dot plots. So to make a dot plot, first I want to draw a number line with a range large enough to contain all the values from the data set. And then for each observation, I'm going to make a dot above the number line at the value of that observation, starting from the number line and going up in a vertical line. So let's look at another example. This chart shows fuel economy of some 2011 model year vehicles. And we're going to look at the city mile per gallon and make a dot plot. So first I want to find what my range is here. What's my smallest city mile per gallon? Looks like that is 16, the infinity. And my highest city mile per gallon is the Toyota Prius, with the 51. So I want to have a number line that includes everything from 16 to 51. And to make it a little bit nicer, I'm going to go from 15 to 55 so that my number line here is split up into intervals of 5. Now I can go ahead and fill it in by just drawing a dot on my number line for each car here. So let's start out at the top. I've got 2 with 17 miles per gallon, so 17 on my number line would be about here. So I'll put one dot there for the Acura, and then straight above it another dot for the BMW. My next value is 19, so I'll draw a dot for 19 right here. Then I've got an 18, so I draw a dot at 18 there. Uh, 22, 22 is going to be about here on my number line, so I draw a dot there. Another 17 on top of the two I already have, so there's three of those. Then 16, which I said was my lowest observation, goes there. I've got a 24, which will be 
right here. Another 18. I've already had one 18, so I draw that dot right above it. Uh, 21 will go in here. Another 19. I've already had one 19, so I draw a dot straight above that. Another 22. I've already had one of those, so I draw a dot straight above there. And finally, I've got 51, which is way over here on my number line for the Toyota Prius. So this is my dot plot. And you can see that most of the cars are grouped down here between 15 and 25 miles per gallon city gas mileage. And then I've got an outlier here of the Prius, which is the only hybrid on this chart. So this is just the dot plot drawn by the computer. So that finishes that example. And this is a short section. So things you should know for this section, you should be able to create a stem plot for a data set and create a dot plot for a data set.